What up guys, Annie it's here, Guild Forever, going to be doing a brief little review for Ultra Q, episodes 1 through 3. Um, I'm not gonna lie to you, like, th this is definitely giving me OG vibes. It definitely reminds me of some of the films I used to watch when I was a kid, like, the early, the early, the early, uh, 19, like, 1960s, 1960 something. I remember seeing a few films like that way back when I was a kid. I learned to appreciate those more at a young age because those were introduced to me a lot when I was a kid with my folks. And here's the thing, this gives me the exact same vibe. But anyway, before I get into the review of this video, make sure you guys hit that like button, comment, subscribe if you haven't already, as well as watch this video from beginning to end. That way we can finally hit that YouTube algorithm and become monetized because again we have the sub count we still need the watch time if we can get the watch time up then we are we can finally become monetized further expanding this channel so please guys watch this video from beginning to end this particular one this YouTube video here but if you don't want to see the whole video watch as much as you're able to and if you don't want to watch this review video this one right here period at least hit that like button before exiting out of the video. If you can just hit that like button before exiting out of the video, I'd greatly appreciate it. Because um, again, um, you want to hit the like button because if this gets enough likes, we'll do another set of three episodes for Ultra... For, I was about to say Ultraman. Ultra Q. Um, so one other thing I wanted to mention. I was looking things up. Don't worry, nothing that would spoil. But there was something else called... Neo Ultra Q. Is that like a sequel to this one? Because I don't remember seeing it in the chronological list that I was given. Is Neo Ultra Q related to this series at all? Someone please inform me in the comment section down below. I'd greatly appreciate if someone can tell me. But, um, so yeah, um,. I was originally going to watch the Ultraman 1960-something in 66, but instead someone in the chronological list tell me this was technically the first to air relating to Ultraman. This was the first thing that was released way back in the day. So, um, because this one's the first one to release before the Ultraman 1966, I'm going to finish this off. And once I finish this, then we'll move on to the 1966 one. Alright. It shouldn't be that long. There's like, what, 28 episodes? 28 episodes? That, that, that won't take too long. That won't take too long. But yeah, so we're going to be re so we're gonna be watching this on in, in the meanwhile. Hopefully you guys still enjoy it nonetheless. But me personally, I thought it was fun to watch. It was interesting. If there's anything, I will say this. For me, the most entertaining factor in this series so far has to be the human element. The human element gives it more... Um, how can I say this? It keeps it interesting. It keeps the story afloat. The monsters, they don't really have a real story for them. They just appear and do, th and do destruction, which is fine. They're kaijus. This is typically the normal kaiju theme. But... Kaijus are greatly more appreciated if there's some kind of go story that goes along with it. And I feel like we're getting to that after episode 3. After episode 3, I feel like we're now starting to get more into the real core story for these creatures and how they came to be, as well as where they might possibly be from. So, I do appreciate that. So, I was worried that it was just going to be random monster pop, pop up and then... At the end of every episode, they figure out a way to deal with it. But no, those were just like the startups. Now I feel like after episode three, I feel like we're getting the heart of the story. And for the most part, I I'm actually looking forward to episode four. Because after episode one, it was like, oh, it was funny. The little fight between Litura and Gomez, and Gomez was extremely hilarious. That was funny. That just felt like two Muppets fighting each other. <laughs> that for me was hilarious. But after episode three, I feel like now I can start to see some more 
story elements being implemented in regards to where these creatures come from why are they here where are they and like what what is their goal the main thing for me is what is their goal what are they trying to accomplish are they are they simply just the embodiment of destruction which may again make sense kaiju is usually in every story related to anime live action or whatever it may be especially godzilla godzilla movies are like in my opinion the king of kaiju stories that i don't know no then again i haven't I, I i i've seen decent i feel like i've seen a good bit of ultraman but not enough to where i can really say which one really because i was i was gonna say like no i feels like ultraman should be the king of kaiju's uh, kaiju series is what i meant to say but i need to see more to better give that statement otherwise i'm just talking out of my <laughs> so um can't wait to see it that but for the most part uh godzilla is the more the more well-renowned uh story that ha that is featured a lot in kaijus man i also feel like seeing me like the classic godzilla films man those films were the shit but either way one after another one story at a time for now let's focus on ultraman and maybe later on godzilla but um it was still fun to see um how each episode doesn't feel like like at first i thought each episode wasn't directly connected to one another but no they were they were they were absolutely connected it's just the timing threw it off for me a little bit but no everything is absolutely connected uh yuri is one crazy son of a gun she's willing to do anything just to make sure she gets a good story a hey, reporters man Nothing can stop them. Nothing can stop them whatsoever. But the thing is, two of the kaijus, they were here. Hmm. Because this is my theory. I'm assuming that monsters are creatures from Mars. They've had those eggs there for quite a long time. Because look at how big Litura, Li, Litura's egg was. And then there was Gomez that was just hiding out in the cave. They were probably been there for many, many years. Centuries, maybe. And they were probably left there from Mars. But now, since all of them have been taken care of so far... Um, The creatures from Mars or Kaijus or whatever, they're probably starting to take notice at the human activity like, hey, look, they already took two of ours is down. And now we got to get more serious. We're about to drop two more eggs on them. And this time they're in for a world of hurt. That's what I'm trying. That's what I'm beginning to notice more or less. But I, I wonder if they're going to end up going into space somehow, though. Because they can't just leave Mars unoccupied. They sent them two creature eggs to deal with the humans or at least give a message to like, Hey, relax. You're an inferior species. Learn your place. Some Something like that. So, as for what they're planning on doing up there. Who knows? We'll see. Right now, we need to take care of Gary the Snail from SpongeBob here and now before he decides to eat everything in sight. But apparently, its weakness is salt water. Isn't that typically a snail's like? Don't snails not like salt water? I don't remember. Someone please tell me. Because I wonder if that's the snail kaiju's weakness, or if that's overall their weaknesses because that's that's food for thought now we, but at least now they know how to deal with the snail now it's a matter of what 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 are the creatures from mars or the intelligent life on mars going to do next especially once they find out that the humans are going to take care of they already took care of one snail well not really the snail kind of oofed kind of goofed on itself low key it's just a matter of what's going to happen once they take care of the second snail. Are they going to send more? Or maybe they're just going to keep quiet because they assume that the uh, the eggs that they left already did the job. 
who knows we're gonna have to wait and see for the upcoming episodes but anyway guys that's it for me hopefully you enjoyed these nonetheless i know when it comes to old school kind of feely uh series films it's kind of a hit or miss for most for me i'm personally fine with it it, it it's making me reminisce of my childhood but uh I I do hope everyone else does enjoy it for the most part and can't wait to see more. That way we can go through the entire journey of Ultraman starting from the very beginning to the very end. So, let me know in the comment section down below, guys. But other than that, that's it for this one. Um, hashtag, 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 uh, beware the golden balls. Oh. <laughs> Hashtag beware the golden balls. <laughs> that way it lets me know you watch this video from beginning to end. Oh my god, I'm so dumb. But yeah, that's it from me guys. Peace, I'm out.